Hi guys. So here we are after reading chapter 19, 19. of the book of Matthew and now it's time to review. Uh, so you go first. What stood out to you? So for me it was the beginning part where it's talking about marriage and divorce. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to divorce you, but because I want to find a way for you not to divorce me. Oh, okay. So the Pharisees came to Jesus and they asked this question, testing him and saying to him, this is in verse 3, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? So they were just trying to find ways to leave their wives. Maybe they had a wife that didn't like cooking or washing the dishes or doing any of those wifely things that you would think wives would do, right? They got, you know, they got married and thinking, okay, you know, my wife's going to make me a sandwich every single day. Well, the wives stopped making sandwiches and now they want to find a new wife. So they're asking this question. I'm not saying this is what I you make your sandwiches. Yeah, this is this is not what you do, but maybe <laughs> that's what they were dealing with, the Pharisees. Okay. And so Jesus answers and says that God made male and female in the beginning perfect. Mm -hmm. He joined them together perfect. The the ideal marriage is for them to stay together forever. Yeah. And we know the Bible tells us that God hates divorce. So we know that yeah, divorce is not um, is not in the mind of God but then he says this in verse 7 they said to him why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put her away and he said to them Moses because of the hardness of your hearts permitted you to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so so we know that God was the one who spoke to Moses yeah. and it was Moses who gave this alternative to the people mm -hmm. so yeah in a way God gave this right but he's referring this back to Moses because it was found in the books of Moses that there was a provision for divorce. Mm -hmm. And just because there's a provision for divorce doesn't mean that that is God's ideal. Yeah. And if you keep reading, it tells you for what reasons you should be or divorced. That would be okay. That would be okay for a divorce. And not just here, but in other parts of the Bible, it gives you reasons why divorce would be okay. But like I mentioned God's ideal is always for people to stay together to work with each other mm -hmm. but because of the hardness of our hearts right because of us because of how selfish we are how dumb we are God allows things like this to be in place and I've seen you know just reading through the Bible I see how God has been working with people and God allows things to happen mm -hmm. people to take multiple wives but yet, God still works with them. But his ideal is always the best. Like It's always good for us to stick with the ideal. Yeah, if we can follow the, like his ideal and stick with doing that, it makes our lives easier. It makes our lives better. It makes us be happier. But then, since we're stubborn... So, and because we're selfish, selfish. he allows these provisions mm -hmm. and to be in place so for you what spoke to you so for me um, the story of the rich young ruler so you know he the rich young ruler comes and he talks to Jesus and he's asking him you know what can I do to inherit eternal life and Jesus says oh keep keep the commandments and he basically says oh I already do that you know I already keep the commandments what else can I do? And Jesus says, okay, well, sell everything that you have. And the rich young ruler walks away sad because he owns a lot. And then it leads into verse 25. And the disciples say, who then can be saved? So they're basically seeing that he's doing everything perfect. And just because he doesn't want to sell his things, he's not going to be saved. And then Jesus goes on to say, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And so basically, you know, anything that we try to do on our own is going to be impossible. If we want to change our lives, if we want to start following God, if we want to do good, do better, it won't be possible on, on our own. It's only possible with God's help, asking God for help and trusting that He will help you through it. 
trusting that it's okay i mean i honestly like my life has changed so much since i started loving and following god and trusting in him i have changed so much i have seen the blessings of how this can be true and i'll end with verse 29 and jesus said and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands basically anyone who, who has left anything for my name's sake shall receive hundredfold and inherit eternal life and this kind of reminds me a little bit of a few chapters back when we were talking about you know putting god first making god first and loving and following him above everything and anyone so salvation is available for everyone for everyone regardless of social class ethnicity race right god says it's possible for you to be saved whatever background baggage you come with god says it's possible as long as you are willing to love him and make him first in your life so make sure to leave your comments of what spoke to you and we hope to see you tomorrow god bless you